This is Groove Talk with Froggy Style. Uh, welcome to another episode of Groove Talk, everybody. On this episode, I am joined by the band Harsh. Hello. Uh, um, so to start off, why don't you guys just kind of introduce yourself and tell the audience about Harsh. We try our best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, what can we say about Harsh? Um, well, it's made out of four people. Made out of four people. <laughs> there is Megan. Hello. Rebecca. Uh, Rob. Hello. Cameron. You gotta say hi, Cam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought because I already talked that it would be okay. Because I wasn't one of the other people. <laughs> yeah. We've been uh, friends for a long time and decided that we wanted to play music together. And uh, so we did. Yeah. And we, yeah. We also... Tricked people into putting us in shows. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been fun. We like to get angry about feminist issues. So. Lots of issues. Lots of issues, yeah. yeah. There's always another issue. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so how long have you guys been a band for then? Um, j- just over two years? Yeah, yeah, just over two years. Yeah, I think we started playing together Jan- January. Yeah, January 20. No, 16, I think. No, 2017. 17. 2017. Yeah. I can't yeah. do math. <laughs> 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 so. Did you guys remember that our CD came out a year ago when it did? Because I did, and I found out because of Harvey. Yeah. I was I, thinking I about that a couple I, I, days I ago. Like, I was like, why did, why did Harvey post that? But yeah. uh, it feels like it's been a fucking eternity since yeah. we put that out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, been, it's been one year since our first like EP release, so... No, it's the first album. Or, uh, yeah, oh, first yeah. album release, yeah. 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 Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> cool, that must be, like, kind of a surreal feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. Feels like it's been out forever. It yeah, has. I, I yeah. kind of got relieved that it was only a year. I thought we just wasted a ton of time or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's only a year. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I felt the same thing. I was like, yeah. "We're only, pl- we're not doing enough. We need more songs. We need new things." Like, like, oh, it's only been all those bands yeah. that like put an album like every year. And I'm like, all those bands that like get paid to make an album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So you guys said that you were friends before you formed the band. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Would you say that that's uh, has benefited the band in any way, I guess, or... Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Way better. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we are all just hanging out all the time anyways, so, I mean, we used to hang out at least once a night and hanging out, getting drunk and... At least once talk- a week. <laughs> <Or> I mean, <laughs> once a night. Once a week, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drunk, like, I mean, at least everyone does think once... that these two live with us. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 sometimes <laughs> getting drunk once a night sounds about yeah. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. It's more than once. It's actually been brought up to us a lot that Cameron and I uh, live at Rob Megan's house. We don't, but apparently a lot of people think we do. <laughs> it's just funny. No, I love it. Yeah, it's nice because, I mean, I can trust these guys with everything, and if we do get in arguments and stuff, like, it's not a big deal because we all know that we just love each other, and we can, like, get through anything, and it's cool. Like, you don't have to... It's just fun, you know? Like yeah. I like that cool. there is no icebreaker of me not having to wear pants to, like, sleep in the hotel room <laughs> and stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's sometimes true. it sometimes take a bit. Yeah. Totally. But, like, I like just not having to care about that. Yeah, it's easy when you're in a band of people who've already seen you at your worst, so you can't really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Still going down. Exactly. You can't really yeah. Disappoint. <laughs> yeah. So true. I think I'm, I don't know. Was that when we were in Brooklyn when you pressed hams on the frosted glass? That was probably the. I don't even remember that here. one. Yeah, the bathroom door in the tiny. Little <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or no, that was pretty good. <laughs> or when we were in yeah. Florida and you farted and it was like a wave everybody was just like what oh yeah <laughs> we all had to run and puke <laughs> well, <that's an> <laughs> yeah so we of, like, 
<laughs> Ten little monkeys on the back. <laughs> we've already, yeah, we've already traveled around together and seen each other at our worst. So yeah, I think it's definitely beneficial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we always go like music things. So we go like shows and festivals. It might as well be on tour because we just yeah do, like shit and get drunk and like have an awesome time anyways. So yeah. we were all we were doing was uh, p- paying for it instead of playing it. Yeah. yeah. So that was another reason I think we started. This yeah. <laughs> I'm so sick of paying to go to Vern's. Like, yeah. <laughs> if we can just sneak in like a quarter of the time, it just yeah. helps. Yeah, Clint will catch you every time. Yeah. <laughs> it's like half the reason I started this podcast is I was like, now I can start applying to like festivals and stuff for media and I get to go for free. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Genius. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so, how does, I guess, the, the songwriting process work for you guys, then? I don't know if we have one. <laughs> yeah. it, it varies on the song, because sometimes, like, Rob will come up with, like, a riff, or Cameron will come up with a riff, or um, Rebecca will have some lyrics, or I'll have some lyrics, or someone will have lyrics, and we kind of just, like, puzzle piece it all together. Uh, there's a couple songs that we've written that we've had, like, goals with. Um, like I guess summer was one of them because we wanted to have like this like fun energy summer song but like have some really like weird kind of downer lyrics mm-hmm. um, but or, like really it's just like a puzzle piecing of like all of our little bits of ideas of putting it together and making fun music out of it I think mm-hmm. that's um that's another piece where being friends beforehand really helped too because we knew that we we trust each other so bringing new stuff to the table is still nerve-wracking but not as bad as if it's just new people mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah because a lot of the stuff we do like to talk about gets pretty like emotionally raw especially in the beginning stages and so like to bring that forward can sometimes be like and how are we going to put these together and make it into a song? Because I know there's lots of stuff that we've written, like, especially with, like, depression and stuff. There's some pretty, like, heavy topics that, that a lot of that really stems from. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, uh... Oh, no, shit, I lost it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dumb I even oh, I remember it. The <laughs> amount of stuff we've left on the cutting room floor just because we forgot to write it down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh wow. So Our We're, best songs are never gonna be heard again. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We're learning though. So, last time we jammed, we wrote a new song. We recorded it. We stepped it up from. Oh yeah, we wrote yeah. it down. We writing recorded. Writing down's not enough. You yeah. write it down, then you get there. You know the notes, but you're like. Well, like, how does this sound? What yeah. was I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's happened so many times. I guess that has nothing to do with us knowing each other. That was more for like, oh man, it's her own dumbassery. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, like, if you that are in to any yeah, yeah, to any <laughs> bands that don't actually know how to play music, that is a hot music tip yeah, yeah. I feel like if you know the names of the chords you probably already mastered that one <laughs> we have like seven notebooks going around and like pieces of different songs in each notebook yeah. like. mm-hmm. I like when you guys get when you guys get the lyrics and they don't quite match up and they're oh, supposed yeah. to this is pretty good <laughs> you're like wait is this the new one or is this the new one I don't know like, yeah. oh, which should... one sounded better <laughs> 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 Uh, it sounds like a very similar way in how I do things. I have so many notebooks that just have like, I'm starting something here, and then oh, I have this notebook at this time, so I'll finish it in this notebook. And yeah. it's just like, then I go back to like put it onto the computer, and I'm like, three <laughs> notebooks searching through them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got about 35 notebooks with my name and the year written in them, and I can't, I just get too intimidated. I think the good lord for this modern technology so I could just backspace instead of scraping out things and like <laughs> erasing them and tearing out pages. Oh, I really a wonderful part. time. <laughs> I can't do it. Like, I just get too intimidated to do that kind of thing. You're all nuts. You don't have too much confidence. <laughs> I like the ripping of the paper. That's cathartic. Yeah. <laughs> 
It is very permanent when you write it down in a notebook. Mm -hmm. like, it does take some effort to erase it, I guess. I'm sure you got those stupid pink erasers and they just... Oh. <laughs> 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 about that one. We need to get you some better erasers, Cam. I'm just going to stop stealing pencils from kids at school. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you wouldn't vote it during recess. You would just steal all of this. <laughs> I, got, I got some an unemployed man like me needs to get his change somehow. <laughs> I, can, I can shake those kids down. How do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> 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 you basketball and your backwards hat on. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, yeah, I, just, I wish I didn't go at recess. There's so many fucking kids. <laughs> <laughs> um... So you guys mentioned that the uh, the content of the songs is a, there's a little bit of an emotional attachment to it. Um, do you ever find it difficult to present that to an audience and play it on stage? Mm, not really. Once no. we're used to it, it, once the process is done, I think we yeah. Just, it's a once we have a full unit, we can just really push that on stage. I mean, I don't know the lyrics half the time. Oh yeah, I don't know any lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> I help write them, and then it's just like in my together. We did know together. them once. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of my Rob and Rebecca questions. I, I, I do think yelling. you know when we bring something to each other that's a little bit more emotional. I think it's just <laughs> getting through it with each other, and, and which is easy because we're all friends and we all know. Um, but then once we're once we have it down and the song goes with it. I, I, I honestly don't think about it too much. Like I, I love ha putting that emotion into songs, but I don't really, I, I, I like being vulnerable on stage and having those Whenever, kind of topics. Sorry, I, yeah. I, I jumped in too quick. It's that okay. Was kind of no worries. Um, whenever it's a super emotional charge, holy shit, you guys wail on it way harder. If yeah. it's like a song we don't care about as much or an issue that's not as important or dealt with or something, it's like, yeah, whatever. But when these guys care, oh man, you get the like <laughs> punch. Well, I think that's what it, uh, what it is really is that when you're making up the song, the the emotions are really on the top of it and you're trying to integrate it. But once you have the song down, um, you really just get all your emotions out by playing it or singing it or doing mm -hmm. it. The emotions are still there; they're just in the song rather than. It's a form of catharsis. Yeah, right? exactly. Like a, Just getting it out every time. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Cool. Um, I was about. Do you guys, I guess, find the songwriting process very cathartic in a way? <laughs> yeah, I I know that whenever I'm presenting lyrics and stuff, even just like putting them out there, it's just being able to you know, physically remove them from my body and put them somewhere else. So just that process is cathartic for me anyway. I don't know about you guys, but... I just like screaming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like writing now. Yeah. It's fun. I'm pretty good at editing stuff down to the right amount of syllables and yeah. rhymes and stuff. Cam's our, like, final editor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, make sure I sit there, like, my song prices, uh, I just, like, tap my fingers to see how many syllables there are and, like... Okay, there's a ten in that one. Oh, we gotta pick some new words. <laughs> like this is gonna work. What words about. are we using that we have ten syllables? Cam? Well, not one word. Zealotry. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, that's right. We have well, that one. Well, <laughs> I, 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 you could get hyphenated, maybe. I don't think you'd be right, but you could. It's just when you're saying it real yeah. fast, you gotta. You I think some of the stuff that I'm, I'm really <laughs> really bad for that. Word. I think we try to get too many ideas out. We we don't really yeah. consider Rebecca sometimes if it's one of our songs. We give it to her and she's like, what am I supposed to do this? Yeah, there's been a couple of times where she turns around and goes, you need to go slower, I'm going to pass out. <laughs> well, there's, <laughs> there's one song, what, the first song that we did, Sexy Eyes. Sexy Eyes. And we always used to joke that if I don't almost pass out at the end of it, we didn't do it fast enough. Well, still to this day... I still turn around, I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> like, I need to breathe, <laughs> so, but words. it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Who breathes? I don't need to breathe. <laughs> I think it's good that we use those emotionally charged topics, because people can get down with us even if they don't like how we sound. They can be like, yeah, but we agree with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, like, we like where this is coming from. Yeah. I think, and we write a lot of political stuff too, but everything is like comes from an emotional side for us. Like it's not just 
a black and white or just explaining something that's going on it's kind of a like what we think about it and we we are we we are factually correct as much as we can be too mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's we, true. yeah we do try to don't want to say anything that's incorrect mm-hmm. that's the worst <laughs> derail we, the whole song we, yeah we try to have our emotional perspective on correct topics yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what they're trying to say is that we wrote a song about Jason Kenny, and that was really hard because we had to remove a lot of emotion and name calling, but also yeah. really easy because of all the scandals. There was a but also there really was hard there. because of all the scandals. I just say it's election night uh, when this is recorded, so yeah. I'm I'm really worried, and I'm hoping uh, it's not Kenny Nation here yeah. <laughs> a little yeah. bit. But. Oh yeah. That's so. I, I'm assuming all of you voted. Yes, oh, yeah. we did. Yes. Well, that's good. It was fun. Yeah. A little yeah. responsible. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys remember the first time that you voted? Oh, yes. yep. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I went to the elementary school that I, I, I went to four elementaries, and the first one I went to is the first time I went and voted. I had to go to the same school. I was like, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I think I think the first time I voted was was that when we lived in the apartment? I don't remember. Yeah, it would have been the apartment. Yeah. Or I don't know, maybe the basement. Uh either way, yeah. I, I do remember it being like kinda of, it felt really pointless because it, it was just PC uh Alberta for forty years. Yeah. So it just was like nothing's gonna change, so I went and voted green. And oh yeah, that's yeah. right. I voted green. I yeah. Too, where it was just like, oh, nothing matters. Everything's mm-hmm. garbage. Yeah, I voted green. They're not gonna win. We never <laughs> talked about that. I also voted green. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like a vote of non con yeah. <laughs> It sucks. I like the green guy. Yeah. I don't, I don't dislike it, but like they're not gonna win. No, like, I know. That's like, it, it sucks. Yeah, in Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so I I always thought the Green Party's their whole thing was to legalize weed. It's for the environmental, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what are they gonna do now? <laughs> yeah, never mind. <laughs> They're legalizing all sorts of plants. <laughs> all pl- that's their platform. All plants are legal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that should be our next shirt. The Greek party's not for weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I, I think I voted the Green Party for the same reason. Is it's like I don't yeah. really agree with any of the other parties. Yeah. This one kind of fits what I'm looking at, mm-hmm. but I also know that it doesn't really matter. It's like a protest vote, almost. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's, Definitely. Like, it's like a protest vote, but being like, yeah, but I do lean towards some of these other guys. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so how important is it for you guys to make your songs political, then? <laughs> is it just something that happens, or is it something that you really try and kind of aim for? I think it really depends on the week. Really yeah. What we're yeah. Doing. It yeah. definitely depends on that. What we can think of words for. <laughs> that, but I think because we're just so passionate of people and we really do care about um, like what's going on in like you know even just like locally in the city right like it comes through even if we're not necessarily making it political like they are politically charged because that's what matters to us right um, yeah it's not so much that we we aim to make them political but it's just kind of what we're feeling strongly about at that point in time mm-hmm. so we just I mean, sometimes we write about pants but well yeah. but you, you, you could argue that that's a political, political angle. Yeah. yeah that's right you could argue yeah. that's a, a feminist issue yeah. i currently have no pockets Me. i do that's why i bought these pants <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why i put my whole hand in them they're stitched there yeah <laughs> they're not real i don't have pockets in my pants but Your i'm pants also i'm wearing girls pants so yeah. Cam's wearing cargo shorts. He's Camo cargo shorts. Cam yeah, he's got, he's got yeah. enough pockets for all of us. Lesser, I'm ready for the pit. <laughs> <laughs> Except for my crumbling body. <laughs> it's good. There will definitely be definitely be a pit that breaks out later. Oh, there's always Sweet. a pit when I'm around. <laughs> Cam 
nickname the Pit Cipher. Is what you call it. <laughs> no, that to be a nickname. No, no. Oh, okay. the Pit Sucks. <laughs> the Pit. New wrestling name. Like, no, there's like no good. The pit. There's like a thing of that. <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh, well, that's your new nickname with no. us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really pitted yourself against yourself. Oh. <laughs> The pits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad you guys will give me a mic when we do shows. <laughs> we have one photo of you with a microphone, and I use that one quite frequently. Yeah. That was was that yeah. the, that was our though. photo release. Was, was our, that our CD? Because it was either the really release. good one of yeah. the of the CD release, which was yeah. super awesome and fun and good. And then there's that the equally fun and good and awesome ones, but. Our worst show ever. And oh. you still have get down at the same venue. So I don't know what that was from. Yeah. No, that one was that was from because Amanda took that photo. I can tell because yeah. both my eyes are open the same width and I'm not <laughs> fucking gonna vomit there, so <laughs> I'm not like looking like the guy who's gonna drink out of a garbage bag later on in the Which you did do. Which you did do. I have it on it video. It didn't have any garbage in it. <laughs> <laughs> it did have beer. That, that yeah, was fun. But, uh, East Town Get Down last year was the shit. Yeah. That's how I made the the people at the restaurant really like us because one of the uh, uh, good friends of ours class yeah. of 93 yeah they were going to shotgun a beer completely like, out of character Jenny was going to do something that could end up like messy <laughs> Or, yeah. or, uh, so I ran to the scene. back and I was like, do you have a small garbage bag? Like, for what? Like, they're gonna, about shotgun a beer. Like, I need to catch it with something. They're like, here, please, take it. <laughs> <laughs> I think this small taco restaurant wasn't yeah. just prepared for that. <laughs> they were hardly prepared for our, uh, senior release. But they were, oh, that food is so good. Yeah. Their food oh, is salsa, amazing. Oh, salsa so restaurant great. on International Ave. So good. People are, that are super nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like a family run restaurant. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a family run Mexican restaurant that accommodates punk shows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a tight place. Pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah. <laughs> they deserve a bigger location. Yeah. It does get a little tight in there, but it fills the room. Three, every band show yeah. salsa looks like you got a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, uh, what does a, a live harsh show? look like from the audience I guess uh, I know you've probably never seen it from the audience being <laughs> the fact that you we are just on talking stage, about that but, yeah. <laughs> you know, we've never actually like heard ourselves live yeah. so I can only I, I just think we sound like drums in a b- bass amp <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear anything past what? the drums I guess like what kind of energy do you bring mm, to the stage yeah. well we do know that Megan doesn't make any weird drummer faces I don't Okay. All the pictures, <laughs> all the pictures of you drumming, you're like oh, super um, cool. Um, <laughs> I was saying that to me the other day. They're like, yeah. Megan does make drummer face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't with you guys. We had this active conversation with people. Yeah, you were in You there. don't make a drummer face. <laughs> 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 all right. <laughs> I don't know. I just stand there. So these guys are the spirit of the show, really. Yeah. They have to channel all the energy. I think it's, I think it's fairly high energy. I mean, we are, our songs are fast and... If they're not fast, they're usually pretty angry. So, I mean, yeah. it's kind of... I, I, I think it's pretty energetic. Sh- if I'm in a good mood, stuff. you might see a jump kick. or well, an attempt yeah. at a jump kick. Or uh, Didn't you almost fall off the stage at the Pal last time? We, we and Rob both did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We weren't expecting that. Kept stepping back and... Ooh, that was... uh-huh. <laughs> I lost my glasses. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Oh. Yeah. I went yeah. to go push them out because then my finger got caught and then they flew off. And I was like, well, those are gone. <laughs> Show up <laughs> no, early... They're... We have lots of fun. Like, oh. yeah, yeah, I think so. that really comes through. Even when we're having like a bad night or whatever, it's fun. Like, yeah. We just. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a big thing too. Is it, our, our music from us? It, it sounds kind of angry, but we are having fun yeah. all the time with it. That's, that's one thing I noticed that we are always giggling between songs. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter if we're going from a really hard song to a really angry song. We just all look at each other, we're like, hey, we did it! <laughs> Between all of them, so. Oh, they're, they're a lot of fun. If you're lucky, I'll, I 
glasses will fly off. <laughs> I'll hit my head uh, in my face. Yeah. I need <laughs> information about our shows, I though. Burp into the microphone. Try to be on time as much as possible. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. That yeah. is one thing. I'm never on time to anything except for this stuff. That's true. Yeah. Even though we were slightly late today. Yeah, but that's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure. so it's yeah, we fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, pretty much everything else. I think that's why we got we had to volunteer with Graham last year for East Amgeta. We were there really early, so I could help set up the drums. That's what it was. And everyone and was hung over, and these two yeah. walked a giant tiger. <laughs> she pointed at Cam and Rob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Rebecca did, sorry. I literally just walked around and see, saw if people needed you help. You were supervising. I just, yeah, I just did <laughs> random shit. Like, I, I literally just walked up and down that place. We all got heat stroke. Yeah, it's yeah. great. If anyone ever thinks the giant tiger is not a far walk from International Lab there by the uh, East Town Get Down location, <laughs> they are wrong. That is a very far walk from the side. It is, yeah. <laughs> With no sidewalks built. Yeah. That was... Yeah. I remember what I did. I sat in the uh, in the lounge upstairs and drank a beer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what I did. I did help out. But Typical singer like... does nothing. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> she was like, Rebecca, I just go find a spot and nap. That's true. <laughs> yeah, typical singer. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Sorry. I have my gear, guys. Brings one single microphone. <laughs> oh. I help with drums. I know you do. <laughs> we don't overstay our welcome at shows. When we're done, we're done. There's no like, oh, should we do another yeah. one? Yeah, oh, no, we're gone. <laughs> uh, we've had a couple of times where somebody's like, play another song. I'm just like, what My song? Aunt's already on the <laughs> I let Rob ring out. I'm done. I just like, what song are we? <laughs> I would have got the last bo note bonus in rock band, then the show was a success. <laughs> They're the last note bonus in rock. Yeah, because if you don't land the last note, you suck. Like it's just, it's a bad time. You don't suck. You just have a bad time. <laughs> you weren't gonna say that though. If you don't land the last note, you suck. Yeah, I was gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> like at that time. <laughs> It just it just feels bad. Missing. By the way, I've been practicing my uh, guitar hero. So oh, so we're we bringing that back it. now. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta get it from your parents. <coughs> I know. We should do that tonight. That and DJ hero. That's oh, gonna be a yeah. thing when we when we tour. We're gonna be like busting out there, like making people bring out their old guitar hero shit and making them set it up before we go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta do one song, guys. Gotta keep up the skills. Yeah. Just play, like, low ride or slow ride. Just play slow ride. Okay, yeah. so I actually played just... that the other day and Rob fell asleep. Yeah, really? It's really no. a song. It was that shitty cream song. Was but, it? Yeah. Sunshine so, of your love. Oh, yeah. never mind. I thought oh, it was slow ride. Oh, killed me. I was out. <laughs> Poor choices. Uh, the the amount of times that I played "Creep" by Radiohead on Rock Band, I'm just like, yeah. I don't know if I can. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, anytime "Creep" comes on, I'm like, this is possibly the worst song I've ever heard. Just because of the amount of times I played it on Rock Band. Yeah. <laughs> it's a song anymore. You can like hear that clicking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's this murder for me. That was the only song I ever get a hundred percent on. It was on easy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I put up the Jimmy Buffett DLC. I got all those. Those were real fun to play. Play the Jimmy Buffett? Yeah, one? for Rock Band, there's like three Jimmy oh. Buffett songs. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think my brother. I, got, I don't think my brother bought Margaritaville. I think he what? got like the other songs because he liked them. How do you not buy Margaritaville? <laughs> don't. This isn't a Jimmy Buffett talk. <laughs> you want to talk Jimmy Buffett, we'll talk Jimmy Buffett. It was my Buffett. mistake for bringing it up. But... <laughs> I almost drunkenly ordered tickets to go see him in Vegas like six times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys' house ones. I like disappeared for a bit and I was like, like just finger hovering over like the purchase now tickets for plane tickets. Expedia had a really good deal. <laughs> when was this? <laughs> Less than a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> you're really, like, you're the one that compulsively buys those kinds of tickets. I know. Though. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, you oh, might be going God. to Arizona. <laughs> yeah. I mean, For the chats. <laughs> a small Australian band. <laughs> yep. That's very in character, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I texted my, my dad lives down in Arizona, and uh, texted him, like, 
can we stay at your house possibly for this? So like, you guys are addicted to music. I was like, well, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with your life? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, on, he's on sailboat trips with his brother. Yeah, well. Uh, yeah, he's addicted to sailing. <laughs> <laughs> so those are both perfectly reasonable things to be addicted to. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a lot worse. It's Let's do it. It's true. Yeah. It's the opioid epidemic. <laughs> Left turn. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Serious issue. <laughs> and, uh. You're really good at those segues, too. The, uh, here's hoping that Notley gets in and keeps up that uh, support programs. Yes. <laughs> Election day. <laughs> Just like the look on your face is like, I don't know. You know, this isn't like we're, well, it's recorded, but like our voices are, you can't, they can't see you. I, uh, that's fine. It also is the thing that. Seriousness, though, it isn't a problem. <laughs> no one really knows what I'm, I'm so talking sorry. about most of the time, anyways. Like, my hand gestures are gonna fucking help. I don't really know what we're talking about right now. <laughs> were we talking about, like, our energy on stage? Yeah! yeah. 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 And, then we, and then we got you, Guitar Hero. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of our energy on stage. Right? <laughs> we don't really know what we're doing, we just keep going till it's done. Yep. That's why we can jam for two hours and only go through the songs once. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, I think some of the best energy we've ever had was that one Vern show where I tried to jump up on the stage and clip both my toes on the bottom. <gasps> oh, yeah, and you planted. face planted! So I always show up to our shows early to watch us set up because I'm pretty clumsy. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty, uh, that was the best part of the night. Like, like the, I don't remember, it was a good band we were playing. I don't remember who it was because I might have had like a concussion or something, but it, uh, it was worth seeing. Anyone who saw it was stoked. Was that the night that you had the... Orpheus glasses, too? Oh, yeah, that was a good night. Oh, yeah. Wait, no, I don't know, never mind. I found out you can't play the sunglasses on if you uh, also need to glance down occasionally at where your friends are. <laughs> really yeah. makes it harder to play. I mean, that was the coolest, plastic. though. I did look pretty sweet. They're like the Morpheus fucking or? Matrix glasses. I mean, like... Morpheus, Orpheus, go base. get some walruses. <laughs> <laughs> Red pill, blue pill. <laughs> <laughs> we got some super solid tips already for musicians out there. Uh, record your stuff and listen to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, don't play with sunglasses on. Yeah. yeah. If you have to glance at your friends. You, yeah. In the dark. In, when in the dark. Like, yeah, in the dark. That's, that's a big one. Because if you're out and I have never played an episode. Well, the stage, sunglasses so kind of put you but... in the dark. That's the problem. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, there's that one show that we played where it was so dark that we oh, had somebody in the audience. When we went to Buttsford. Out of the 13 hour drive to play for 10 people. But it was, was, it was really there? Solid. I don't think there was 10 there. No, no. <laughs> no don't get me wrong. It was really fun. There was we had a great time. Night. Yeah. <laughs> it was super cool. They, yeah, I think the light got so turned so off at one yeah, point. Yeah, they just like, the door. Somebody was like by the door, oh. like reading us our set list. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, did we just, just miss the hit? <laughs> Were they just trying to end it? I don't oh, think so. that's what it was. They were shutting off all the lights to get oh. us a leave. <laughs> so I was like, oh, time to go. But they got to play too. Oh no, they're they're good. <laughs> that was a fun time. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess lots of energy could be another acceptable answer. <laughs> but, uh, good or bad. <laughs> yeah. Mostly good. Do you guys do you guys have a favorite show that you have played so far? <sighs> For being I... the biggest probably days and days, but that, I don't know yeah. if it was my favorite. It was one of the coolest. Yeah, yeah, that, that kind of like way too early too for us. Yeah, we just kind of started out and we got this offer, and so we kind of had to tighten up our shit. So, mm -hmm. and, and we we did tighten up our shit, and we played that night for like collectively one of our favorite bands. Yeah, uh, opened up for them, and we didn't suck. So like it felt really good. I, so that's yeah. gotta be it's one of them. They didn't tell us we did. Yeah. True. So we were at least yeah. all right. Yeah. They told us they liked us. <laughs> yeah, I know, but they didn't tell us they didn't like us. I feel like. <laughs> I don't know, if I was touring, I'd tell everyone I liked them. Yeah. It'd be real hard to get me to say I don't like you. <laughs> I mean, like, don't get me wrong, I'm, I still get that ego boost by it, but just try to live a real life, I don't know. What's your favorite, Rob? Uh, I, it sounds like a cop-out, but our album release. It's uh, good, we had yeah. such good buds, good bands playing with us. 
mm-hmm. that night. And yeah, it was the first time we'd ever played salsa restaurant, and it was fucking packed. It was ridiculous. So it was. Yeah. That's got to be right up there. I think mine was the second time we played salsa when we were all just a rack at East Town. <laughs> when Rob walked out fun. halfway through, he just like, yeah. <laughs> you went and talked to Jenny, and he was just like out there like. He's so, down playing yeah. the line. Yeah, but he just, like, he just like, walked outside, out yeah. of the restaurant. <laughs> Which was super funny. It took us like five times to start every song. Like, I remember, uh, I, think, um, I think it was uh, Dan walked up from, uh, from Dead Pixel there, and Tyler was there, and Dan asked, oh, how'd you guys do? I Sorry, I went and watched the dudes, but how was the show? And I was like, oh, that was one of the worst things we've ever done. That was awful. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, you did great. And Tyler turned to him and was just like, no, that was like one of the worst shows we've ever done. That was awful. Well, it's like, uh, what's his name? Mike from Citizen Rage stayed and watched us a little bit before he had to go play his set. And all he told Ross, who's also in the band, was that we were fun. <laughs> <laughs> he had a lot of fun. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there were two people who drove down from Edmonton that night to see us, and we felt so bad. <laughs> that was like the only thing I felt bad about. Yeah. I know, we kept apologizing to them like all night. We're like, we're really sorry. We're not usually like this. <laughs> yeah. Anytime we have a less than stellar set which is almost never because we're so tight oh it's almost never but I mean sometimes we're like oh I don't know or like well it was no East Town get down yeah. <laughs> oh, well that was a, that was a, one of the funnest shows but There's we another music tip. Yeah. set the lowest bar real quick yeah. <laughs> yeah. like I always have something yeah. worse to compare it to yeah. Yeah. I think Still what about yours my favorite show was probably the Mademoiselle EP release Oh, that, oh, was, so that was a good yeah, show, too. too. It was fun. Mm-hmm. We Ripped didn't have to play Ross. Yeah, was me nice. and Rebecca, Rebecca played Topless. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. We did have tape over a couple. We did. But, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, that was a really fun night. Lots of friends. There was lots of free beer. Yeah. There was a lot of free beer. Yeah. This was insane. Oh, no. Uh, I mean, my favorite wasn't Days and Days. It was uh, the, the best... Fed we got in Lethbridge at <gasps> yeah. Flip Fest. That's what yeah, it was. Flip Flip Fest. Fest. Oh, that place is awesome. Yeah. 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 Oh. If you ever get a chance to go to the Owl Acoustic Lounge slash play oh. the Owl Acoustic Lounge, for you get like really really good drinks for like really cheap, and I think you get like two free drinks, and you get uh, like a massive meal, oh. and it's all like made in house, and it's yeah. just like it's, it's the best food. So, so fucking good. good. And it's like Unless a meal. Yeah. It's yeah. cool. And everybody there is so New nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. And considering the owl is, um, like, it's by donation, people in Lethbridge really, like, appreciate it and open yeah. their wallets. It's yeah. crazy. They've got a good little music scene going yeah, on out there. So. Yeah. I feel They're like so supportive super of each welcome. other. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. Both times we played there, it'd been awesome. It was like, yeah, I, yeah it's my, I think it's like my favorite thing to do is just go play in Lethbridge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Nobody's gonna mention their favorite show being uh, Punks in the Basement Fest in Edmonton. Oh, that yeah. was <laughs> that was <laughs> sweet. That was another uh, that was another Mexican restaurant. That was, yeah, that was another Mexican restaurant. restaurant. I think for a while we used to just go Wait, play Mexican what? restaurants. In the yeah. Edmonton, that was a Mexican. Oh, restaurant. I thought you were talking about New Year's Eve. Oh. Like, no, no, no. The, the one where I yeah. I was sad because my old band was ending. Yeah, I played my last show. I got real drunk. And then uh, yep. I, I said, life is pain, and then threw the microphone stand off of the, the, <laughs> the stage. Pretty sweet. Yeah, that, that was, was a pretty good, good show. That's another show yeah, that's I was almost really died. for. I like to pretend that one yeah. didn't exist. I was the only completely sober <gasps> one. The, Poor thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't even remember it. <laughs> they were like, after, they were like, Rob threw his like mic stand off the stage. It was like, he did what? <laughs> <laughs> that was another one of those days we got there early. We should never get any more early, guys. No. <laughs> yeah, we do our best. We try. We show up places early. We help set up. We volunteer. And then we, we have start to be drinking gone by midnight. pretty quickly. Yeah, we turn into pumpkins. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, every time we get pushed back, it's like, oh, can you guys play last? It's like, well, we were drinking for playing at 10, so we can. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's up to you. Are you going to tempt those fates? <laughs> <laughs> the real question is, is Megan driving tonight? Yeah. Or is Rob driving tonight? Because if Megan's driving, you can't go past 10. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I turn into a pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no, best show by far was that sweet one with Easy Death and Three Day Holocaust from California, who nobody watched but us. That's and it was bad. so good. Mm-hmm. Everyone missed out. Literally everyone left except for us and Gord. Yeah. yeah Buddy Gord. You know, yeah. Gord. <laughs> you know Gord. But like, he's important because he's the one person Gord. there. Yeah. And then you didn't watch Rebecca because you were watching our stuff and the guy was like really creepy. Yeah. So it was really good you were yeah. the, not, not even in the bands, like just guy outside. Yeah, just a rando. Yeah, I was just sitting in the back there. He had to get chased away eventually. It was yeah. not very fun. <laughs> that was a fun so show. That was a good was one. Stressful. <laughs> but, yeah. I like the unconventional ones. <laughs> Sounds like you guys have played like a lot of really cool shows. <laughs> <laughs> we have played so many cool interesting shows. Yes. Definitely. I'd say they've all been very interesting. I feel like that New Year's Eve one, I almost got hypothermia. Oh, that was the worst. Well, it was so cold. It was so cold. I was wearing a dress. I was holding my beer, and the the dog jumped up on me, which, not his fault. It's his house. I was on his couch. And I dropped my beer, and I picked it up, but I was drunk enough that I picked it up upside down, and I was like, it's fine! And it's like, nope, it's not. So I was just soaked. It's like minus the 40. The whole night. Yeah. It was so yeah. cold. I wore, like, a... I wore your winter coat all night because yeah. I was I was so cold. You weren't supposed to pee inside if you were able to go outside to pee. Yeah. But yeah. it was minus forty. I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> you just saw these guys like mad dash to the oh, fence. Like, <laughs> like a lot of people just like looking out the window in anticipation and like quick like slamming the door when you get back in. That's <laughs> yeah, that was a weird one. It was yeah. cold. It was hands down the coldest show we've ever played. Thank you, Edmonton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. AOS House, RIP. Yeah. <laughs> that was a fun play like that. I feel like I, when I'm talking about these, it sounds like I'm really negative. I had a great time at all of these. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm yeah, just it sounds like, like we're complaining. I'm we're just kind of a bummer yeah. person, I think. Yeah, we wouldn't be doing it if we weren't having fun. Yeah. Oh, we'd, <laughs> we laugh at, hero. Yeah, we laugh at some of the ridiculous and shitty things that like, there's, there's no bad yeah. things, because no. a week later we just laugh about it. Like, yeah. Well, sometimes, like, what else are you going to do? You're going to be mad about it, and... So most of the time it's things you can't even change so it's like yeah why be mad yeah there's no point there's another helpful band tip don't get angry just laugh about it yeah. <laughs> there's no point <laughs> don't take yourself too seriously yeah. oh absolutely not that's the number one thing oh, you gotta yeah. do no <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, what is your guys' take on the Calgary music scene, then? I get, it seems like you've been to a couple different places and experienced a couple different music scenes, so what makes Calgary's maybe unique from some of the other ones? I think that Calgary has something really good going on right now. Everyone seems to be really supportive of each other, in all genres. Um, which is really nice, and, uh, everyone seems to be generally, I don't know, just, like, excited to be here and participate in everything, which is nice. I don't know. It doesn't. It it feels like, um, Calgary music scene, they're more focused on everything, like, all kinds of genres being accessible than anything else, and that's so great. Because it's, it's funny. You get to go to more shit, so. Mm-hmm. It feels so much less like a competition than mm-hmm. a lot of music scenes can be. Like, a, everyone's trying to bring each other up, I feel like, anyways, with most of the most of the bands we play with. We're all, yeah, it's not a competition. It's awesome. We're all just there loving it and bringing each other up. It's just a bunch of friends at the end of the day. I just feel like whenever I go to a show, it doesn't matter who's playing. You know everybody anyways, and you just have a good time. And, yeah, it just... Everyone's good in the scene. They just know they're they, they know how to make a good band, I guess. Yeah. Calgary's good at that. I mean, it sucks here so much of the year that like, no kidding, we all go do something, make good bands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of really good talent out there right now too, which is really good to see everyone like, blossoming and like you know making sweet ass records and 
Yeah, like, all that kind of stuff. Right? Cars home and dross. I hope they do real good. They just left. Oh, they're but, going to. Yeah. But yeah, like we've had some really sick bands of all sorts of genres in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's and, like lots of talent in the city right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One problem with the scene is there's a lack of venues. Yeah. Yeah. It's like especially all ages. Oh, especially, yeah, especially, all, especially ages. all ages. So there's like what? A few house, Tubby Dog, Broken City till nine. Na- nine, eight. Yeah, nine. like Ten, yeah. always on a Sunday though. Yeah, they yeah. well, I mean, it's yeah. like every other bar. Why would you not have people paying for real drinking during <laughs> yeah. the drinking hours? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's too bad, and I I know a lot of the issue here is there's a lot of bylaws that impede a lot of places, which sucks, and I wish that, considering that, I mean, the city has literally, like, a place called the Music Mile, and we have the National Music Center, and, like, but, like, those spaces, though, feel an- inaccessible to someone of our, I don't know, yeah. caliber, but someone, like, we're not, you know, we don't bring in 100,000 people, and all those kinds of play- things, right, like, but those are supposed to be accessible places, I guess. And yeah, it's sad like, that they don't feel accessible to people like me. Like, I don't feel like we'd ever play a place, like, I don't know, any of the music stuff that, like, Calgary's, it looks really good on the surface, but I don't even know the first thing about how you get into, it, like, mm-hmm. into that, like, group of people. Like, it just seems so like far removed from, from bands that play in the city that I never see anything local really supported by it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I but I thought, wanted to be accessible though, because yeah. I love yeah. the idea of everything. Oh, it looks really cool. It sounds really good. Like yeah. the idea and the building. Yeah, yeah the building looks well, cool. Didn't they used to do stuff at the the, the old, old one? one? Yeah. yeah. There was always more yeah. shows there. Yeah, mm-hmm. like we even Roy saw, G. Biv. Yeah. Rip. We went saw the coolest hardcore show ever. Yeah. There. That was a. Oh, I can't remember the name of that. That was when I was standing on the window when, so, uh, like I was like, I need to get a far away. There was from a very time. prominent gentleman who Jeff. passed away, Jeff, who passed away, and it was a memorial show of sorts. And I just remember hearing, uh, five bucks for every broken nose," and then a guy running through with a bar stool, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm just, I'm not a tough man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go back here." And yeah. Yeah. then I saw the most Canadian thing that they were. I'll go ahead and one of the guys got pushed into the sound booth and completely knocked it over. So the sound guy picked up the guy who crashed into it, threw him into a table, and then the guy got up and like helped him put everything back <laughs> on. <and> like, <laughs> plugged everything in and helped him down again. That's what the National Music Center needs to become again. It needs to become a violent but caring place. Again. Yeah. Bring <laughs> yeah. back the violence to the National Music Center. <laughs> Yeah. It'd make this it'd improve the scene. <laughs> <laughs> so how important were all ages shows to you guys growing up then? A lot. Hugely important. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get to go to any. Uh, I spent like every weekend possible going to them. Yeah. Because I was the only one who lived in the city at the time who was who really went to them and you or Rob and Megan came from out of town, so I feel like... Yeah. We grew up in majorly rural Alberta, way, way out in the boonies. Or about five hours from here, three hours to Saskatoon, three hours to Edmonton. So basically my main thing was like I need to get... As soon as I turned 16, I got a car and I would drive to Saskatoon or Edmonton and go to any random shows and you just... go to Lloyd Minister a lot. Oh yeah, Lloyd Minister once in a while, like once every six months would do a show. And it was awesome. And it didn't even matter if it was like, I was getting really into punk, but even if it was just a metal show or whatever, like just to see live music when I was a kid was like crazy, especially coming from a town of 2,000 people. Like it just mm-hmm. seemed impossible for that to happen. And then I would go into shows in the basement, or it was called The Basement in uh, Saskatoon and seeing those local bands and it was just like blew my mind. And I always wanted to become part of that. I just went to all the time. I lived here forever. It was great. I had it awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I just go to one of all those shows that all, like, if I, if I find a group of people my age, I just go stand here and I was like, did you guys go to this one? And everyone nods. And the next guy says, yeah, well, did you guys go to this one? And you just, everybody nods. And, like, this, I love that, that old, like, almost competition of, well, did you see this one? It's like, no, I, I was sick. I was 16 and I was sick that day. Like, <laughs> 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 I never really 
went to them, actually. I said yes before, but I never went to them. You went to, like, <laughs> a couple? Um, yeah, but mostly once they were at, like, the, at the university, because my, my friend's dad um, helped uh, organize all of it, so he got, he could get us in for free, so <laughs> went into that, but their whole family is they're pretty much the reason I listen to the bands that I go to now, like, uh, I think my first real punk show was, uh, was Against Me, which, pretty good, mm-hmm. I think, okay. so, yeah, <laughs> but, no, it was great, I got a shirt that had a bunch of crosses all over it, and I was never wear- allowed to wear it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first, like, music show that I ever went to was, uh, Warp Tour, here, I drove down with Rob and his parents, and it was a lot of fun. It was great. I had a lot of fun. I think I was 16. <laughs> um, yeah, but being from where I was from, it, um, there was, like, no, nothing. It, it didn't there. exist. It, it didn't, doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah. But It didn't, like, the, the thought of it didn't even exist, like. Mm-hmm. But that's wild. why I'm, like, I want to support that so much here, because I think that if I had access to something like that when I was younger... Being as much as I love it now, and music is such a big part of my life, that if I, you know, was able to go to shows when I was, like, 15, 16, whatever, that maybe I would have gotten into it faster and and been even further, been more passionate, right, than what I even am now. So I completely agree. I, uh, I miss community center shows. They don't exist. Like, there's just, like, one, one day there was just never again gonna be a community center show or something. (laughs) Because, well, I mean... There's always that one dick who had to ruin it for everybody, I guess. But, like, even, like, places like the Rehab Center and stuff, like, there's always, like, way more, like, makeshift venues, and then that doesn't happen anymore. It's all at a bar, or it's at, like, mm-hmm. uh, like, a, like a tubby dog or something like that. There's never just at the Scarborough Community Hall. Yeah. We come kick to... in the vents and wreck the bathroom. <laughs> we went to a show at the a senior's home once. Yeah. Yeah. That, like, never happened. Yeah, I went that to a w- show at a senior's home once, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like there was, was a, weird. There's yeah. a lot of one-time shows at senior's home. <laughs> I was actually, I went to a show. It was, like, a hardcore show. And it was in the hall that the seniors used. And my grandparents actually lived in that senior's home. <laughs> 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 I was just like, oh, man, my grandparents just lived there. <laughs> yeah, the show was- brought them to the show. Oh, it was a long time ago. Oh, okay. Um, so, we went. We saw a hardcore show at at a senior center. Yeah, weird enough, the hardcore scene for me. I was dabbling. I never yeah, fully we committed to. Yeah, it. Yeah, same here. Like I never I just, super yeah. got into hardcore I music, just, but uh, they do I, get those community center shows. Yeah, yeah. I oh. love going to their shows, but I, the music I don't listen to uh, recreationally. But the shows are so good. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. I, 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 I sounds like we're doing drugs. <laughs> Hardcore. There's worse things I've been addicted to, Rebecca. It's I'm not addicted, no, I just do it recreationally. No, I've got a hardcore prescription. No. <laughs> I miss the Skate Shack, too. That was a brief flash in the pan, but there was the coolest show I ever saw was at the Skate oh. Shack, and there was an all-ages show. And yeah. it was cool, because they'd go play, the, and the New Black, when they'd go play... Yeah, I was going to say the, New Black. Like, the Dayglo we saw there, and despite the you I saw at um, Skate Shack, and then they both went to play a bar show after, but, like... No one under 18 could have gone and seen them if they didn't do that super cool pre-show, yeah. all-ages show. I love that shit. That was awesome. That's amazing. And plus, yeah. I could go see a band twice in a day. That's awesome. Yeah. Except don't go see Deglo twice in you a day. You don't need to see them twice in a day. It's... Sorry, sorry, Deglo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, second, the, first, the first half was really cool, but then when we went after, it was like, uh, I kind of hope you would have been done by them. I mean, but we were, it was like, Municipal Waste headliners, like, we went for that. It was like, that Deglo's fun, but... Twice? <laughs> you want to be so proud to be a Canadian. I need to yeah. give a quick shout out to the uh, the community hall shows I went to in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. Because <laughs> those were awesome and those are big into me getting into punk and metal and stuff. Yeah. Nice. Shout out. PA. <laughs> I think one of the strangest venues that I went and saw a show at was again, it was a hardcore show, but it was like this weird museum in Airdrie. 
and they had this like classroom back room. It was like a classroom. There was like whiteboards on the wall, and they were having a hardcore show in there. Oh shit! It was interesting <laughs> to say the least. Let's just say that the, the most stressful show. Yeah, we're all oh, in the same yeah. boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all turned around and we're like, yeah. no. So Copsicle played um, Rob's old band. Yeah, Copsicle. Rob's old band Copsicle played um, the music or not the music, the art gallery that used to be in Eau Claire. Um, and it was, it was fun. It was the, the owners of the music, of the, uh, art gallery were very, very nice. And they were the ones that were like, no, you need to come, you need to play. And they're like, I don't know if you want us to play. <laughs> <laughs> it's before the story time. It's very appreciated that the people who showed up showed up. Yes. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> it maybe it was wasn't like the best place for pit skis. Yeah. yeah. There like, was like thousand dollar art getting knocked over. We had to like uh, go catch there statues. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was one point where these two statues kept kind of getting like wobbled and this guy like picked him up and I was like, hey, 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 he just gave them to me and I put him in the back and then at the end of the night we're like, okay, this one goes here and this one goes here. Yeah. Good enough. <laughs> the first thing you do is go throw your guitar case up on like a thousand dollars. It was just a bench. It was, it was like two thousand dollar bench. bench. Was art. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I did not know that was it. art. Yeah, it was a was nice like, bench though. Nice, yeah. But. There was like a Function. giant <laughs> statue that was like three thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah. And there's like an unspoken rule that there's like two layers of people that just held that. So like nobody <laughs> like busted through and wrecked yeah, like, it. One layer of people wasn't enough and they knew no. it because like yeah, yeah, some of those guys if they these guys were they went uh, hard. fast hard. Considering that it was in an art gallery, there was yeah. like a handful of people and they went hard. Which was great, was like, but oh, it was yeah. stressful. I was like there, like making sure paintings were falling down, like yeah. <laughs> straight up the people most. People were like running, show. yeah, like you'd have to like watch because you'd like pick a couple people to watch, and you'd have to go like run over to like art and like push people and just be like get away, like yeah. it's not worth it. Don't do this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was fun. <laughs> Yeah, we're talking about it negatively, but in the long run, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad it happened. Yes, I'm so glad that I went. I don't want to do it again. (laughs) Every bad experience that's happened to us, I think, I'm glad we had at the end of the day because it's funny just, like, think about it. (laughs) That sucked. Like... That's a good attitude to have. Yeah. <laughs> not, only, not only in a band, but also oh, just, in yeah, life. Yeah, that's what was that. If you just assume everything's going to suck, if it doesn't completely fail, that's a win. Right. Yeah. Just always Harsh. hope, expect the worst, and you'll always have a good time. Harsh's t- top 10 tips to be a band. Well, that was just a general life tip. Because <laughs> life doesn't always do what you like, but if you're prepared for it, when it does, how sweet is that? <laughs> <laughs> Top ten band and life tips. Yeah. 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 So we're deep. We're complicated. <laughs> no one can put us in a box. <laughs> Harsh and you're mellow. But we'll never... Fuck, what... Harsh your bag. Yeah, that's what we yeah. did. We talked about like five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do you guys have a, maybe like a standout band or something that kind of really shifted your perspective on music and kind of like made you a music person? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If we're going to be real, it was Slipknot. <laughs> that was the hardest thing ever. It like completely changed my life. Uh, like there's a lot of steps to get to here. I don't hold them to such a torch as I once did. <laughs> such a torch to them as I once did, I should say. <laughs> but I don't want torch them like I used to. But they did reemerge back in my life. But uh, I guess uh, never mind. That's, 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 that's that wouldn't translate. Over the place well. We have a um, funny video to show you. Out I recommend there. that everyone Google or YouTube's uh, cop Slipknot cover band. And skip to two minutes in the video. The cop's not the part to watch. But uh, <laughs> but aside from that, no, like yeah, uh, AFI. That was the first thing I. That was the first cool band I ever got into, in like grade seven. Then it just spiraled. <laughs> yeah, I was always into music, like Queen and all that stuff. But then, you know, I would start getting into like the heavier stuff. And I mean, I I was into the Slipknot and all that. 
and then I got to start getting into like real, real metal, like Cannibal Corpse and shit. And then, but it all just didn't quite feel perfect to me. I liked it, but then well, I remember hearing Dead Kennedys, like Nazi Punks, Fuck Off, and like all those songs, and like I just couldn't believe like it. It had the same intensity as metal, but it was like punk and DIY and awesome and political and stood for something and I just loved it so then after that it was just like punk from there on out and, and then yeah obviously some pop music cause... and like B&L yeah B&L we're really into B&L yeah about the B&L they're really into B&L <laughs> <laughs> we're all really into B&L <laughs> sorry we're all real into B&L yes. yeah thank you <laughs> like bands per se it would more than just people who showed me different things uh bands would probably be my chemical romance because they is that a probably yeah it is. <laughs> yeah, i still love them i will die no i mean is it like you love them and you will oh, die for them like, 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 yes. <laughs> oh yeah 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 and like I was just saying the other day, if they ever did a reunion tour, I'd have to go twice because the first time I'd just cry. And I wouldn't be able to appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, feel, I feel like your yeah. first look into the punk world, though, that scary punk world was hit band Copsicles video. Actually, yes. Because Cam and I were dating at the time, and he's like, I'm in this music video for this punk band. And I was like, cool, I listen to punk. I did not listen to punk. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, so I watched the video, and it was too scary, so I watched it on mute. <laughs> Look at you now. I know. Isn't that last Friday night? Yeah. 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 That, that song is not that scary. I know. It's about <laughs> drinking. I know. It was scary to me. I know. It's That's really why funny. the Mormons don't talk to us anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I don't know. I wasn't into... My grandma would go to the um, dollar bin at the Value Drugs or whatever it is and buy me whatever was on sale. So I had a whole bunch of um, village people and uh, Roger Whitaker <laughs> was a whistling. <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, when I started uh, seeing Rob, um, I really got into music and he made me a CD. Um, and I still have it in my car. And it had like a little bit of everything on it, but like. There was lots of like dead Kennedys and no effects on it and stuff. And then from there, I really started liking like Against Me. And I was really into Paramore for a really long time, but then it got like too soft for me. Yeah. So I. The first couple albums were good. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, from there, just getting into like, you know, like Propaganda and bands like that, really doing it, being loud and aggressive and. Like that. Mm. Crass. I gotta mention Crass because that was a big one for me. Like, because I was like, this is so shitty, but it's so fucking good. <laughs> I'm like, I think what really put me onto punk more was actually going to the shows. It was not so much a band, but actually going to the shows and feeling how intense it was and how, um, like, uh, fun it was and things like that. It was like, oh yeah, so. And then I started listening to it more. Yeah. We talk but, about punk a lot, but we listen to a lot of weird stuff. We rarely listen yeah. to it. Yeah. When yeah. we're together. Yeah, anyway. there's yeah. like a lot. Like, honestly, we li- we'll listen to BNL for hours. Yeah. Like, like yeah. we went hours. to Stephen Page and we sang every song. It yeah, was, yeah, it was great. like. Oh. Rebecca and I are going to Ariana Grande. So next week yeah. <laughs> so we like listen, when we, we drove were, to Buttsford we listened to Nicki Minaj's uh, new album on yeah and then it, was, got stuck, it was stuck so in we my van so. we yeah. listened to it uh, several hundred times <laughs> yeah. it's a good so, album it's a good album it's a good album I, well, I think I, I don't know I, 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 I might be biased on how much we've heard it <laughs> variety is the spice of life yep. you know yeah. so I, I don't know how someone could listen to a, a genre let alone a subgenre. Ugh. All the time, all day, every day. Like, uh, and show that Cam and I always go to is uh, Purity Ring. Yeah, those they guys are, are great. They are amazing. They're from Edmonton, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they're amazing. Their so shows fun. are so good. Like, I used to go to hip hop shows a bunch. I just don't know because they're always late and I'm always 
tired. <laughs> <laughs> Cam will always go see lights. Oh, I'll always go see comes. lights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm following lights since that, uh, she had a movie, it was in like Cineplex, there was like a commercial for one of her videos, and I was like, I dig this song, and then I found out everyone who likes lights likes her because they're creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> 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 totally not creep <laughs> not, not not like for anything to do with lights anyways oh, can't stop. <laughs> I feel like uh... well, I've been told my expressions are creepy sometimes and then I just make them more because I don't know what to do so, like like talking name a picture that I haven't taken where I just Stood there with a straight face, and someone was like, "Wow, you look really creepy in that." <laughs> Why do you always gotta insinuate the worst about me? I, I just feel so attacked. <laughs> <laughs> Some real band drama for you. Good <laughs> 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 sound bite of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I feel like uh, anything but country could be like its own genre. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, so many times you ask people, like, what kind of music they listen to, and they're mm-hmm. like, yeah, I like a little bit of everything, except for country. I <laughs> no, I gotta Have say. you heard oh. Billy Ray Cyrus' Speaking of music that's changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta thank Rob so much for, for bringing this Hertz to my attention. Too. Oh, with Buck 22 featuring Billy Ray Cyrus? Oh, God. I love that. No one liked the, my Instagram post about it, but... <laughs> but I got, like, seven Yeah, I, I, I even used the hashtag truth, which has, like, yes. millions of uses. And no one yes. liked it. I think it's because, like, my art was too good on it. I uh, copied <laughs> pictures of air horns and, like, wrote lyrics down from it. And I used great colors, like pink and vomit green. And there's little air horns and squares sand. all yeah, over yeah, it. Yeah, Comic Sans. sans. Yeah. Bit, uh, yeah, but no one can appreciate Billy Ray Cyrus <laughs> quite like I can unless, well, for that, like everyone loves when a little Nas X song, rightfully so, but um, I don't know, I'm gonna, I shouldn't go on tangents about this. <laughs> <laughs> if I go on a country rap tangent, you'll never shut me up. Yeah. Oh, Talk about that for days. I'm not, I don't oh. like, uh, like pop country, but I like um, Old like stuff. bluegrassy country. I love yeah. Cork Blunt. That's yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah. 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 That's like Sorry. one person Never that we will quit. all go and see every yeah. single time. Shoot it's Rob fangirled over him real hard. Yeah. He's the only uh, man that, the, like, the only man, only famous person I met. That's made me the nervous. Only man I've the met. only man that I met. No, lots of men make me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> made me real nervous. The only famous man I've met. Yeah, I don't know. There's something about him. He's just that's a nice. That's a nice man. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's I'm, a nice man right there. Man, you want to respect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, definitely. I think I don't, I don't know him personally. Like I've heard good stuff. <laughs> guy, at, <laughs> guy at the store one time told me that. He went over to his house and he gave him, Corbin was giving him away beers. Like to strangers. And I was like, that's pretty nice. You could have just told him to fuck off. <laughs> so, <laughs> does having such diverse musical tastes like bleed into your guys' songs at all? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> you probably won't hear any converge in our songs at all. <laughs> but like, but like uh, no, we pretty much only know like four chords and like three rhythms, yeah. so they're all gonna sound the same. We can't play, we can't play the jazz or country. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, that's one of the things that when we are doing any of our music writing, like we when we started this, we're like, I mean, we're a punk band, but mostly because we don't know how to play anything else. But we um, never turned down influence. Yeah, like we. We also were like, we don't want to like get put in a box or like sound the same. So a lot of our songs, we um, try. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you got something to say. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I saying? Um, we try. Know. We try and. Um, and like make them sound differently at least in the beginning because like i mean it's all always going to sound like us because we we do sound like us obviously 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Your signature yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but we do, like, um, we try new things. We experiment with new sounds all the time. Yeah. I do really like how um, we, a lot of our songs sound different from each other. And I really like that Rob and I always play with who's going to sing what or how we're going to sing it or how we're going to sing it together. And that's always fun and mm -hmm. always gets a lot of laughs. Yeah, because we've been writing a lot of like faster, <laughs> angrier stuff. But then the last one we just, where we wrote our last jam session, mm -hmm. tentatively called Menzinger's Baseball. So <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I think it's all over. And. We, yeah, we're How glad are you we recorded that? I already I'm forgot. So I was trying to play it this morning. I forgot. I was yeah, playing. I'm really glad. Yeah. I have it too. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't take it. We, like, we don't, we're not going to exclude any inspiration for our music. And anytime we can, we experiment with it and stuff. We're getting there. We're definitely progressing. Yeah. We're making weird progressing sounds. Where? Like, I don't know. But <laughs> we're uh, progressing. Yeah. Hey, yeah, any yeah, move sure. is still movement. Yes. True. <laughs> <laughs> You're not what, was wrong. <laughs> what? what was the original question of that one? What? Uh, influences in music. Oh. Yeah. How sweet. Basically, just Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> I really like Aerosmith. Yeah, we're like Bon Jovi. Trying oh, to Bon Jovi. Like, yeah. Trying to really sound like that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna be like. One guy puts it in his mouth and makes that wow wow sound. <laughs> what? <laughs> like a mouth heart? Bon Jovi! Oh, one of those, one of those like uh, yeah. Molly Cruz one too, and yeah. uh, it takes out my heart. Yeah. And they call it talk box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I'm not crazy. All crazy. I could think about was that stupid thing Cam sent us today with the, the tongue holder. Oh yeah, oh, oh, yeah. 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 those ads on like Make or Wish or whatever. Wish. It was like get these tongue holders with like the it's diagram. It's like a weird plastic, but it's very large, and you stick it all the way in your mouth, and you and hold it has your like tongue. a holder. And, and yeah, you, you pull don't your tongue out. <laughs> and I was like, guys, no one's making that. We could have harsh yeah. branded tongue holders. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's what is it? Yeah. What is exactly. it? We don't know. I don't but, know. It's a soother, but it but like why? has your tongue in it. I don't but know why, why? not. <laughs> that's, a, that's a place where we go for inspiration a lot, actually. Wish. 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 Yeah, yeah, half the time it's just like us taking screenshots of the wish things and being like, "Is this real? What are they trying to sell us? Can we sell it to each other?" <laughs> I mean, like the switch for four dollars was pretty tempting. Yeah. Yeah, was... What about the feet? Remember that there was a. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I sent you guys. It was just like, feet. It was just feet. <laughs> Like um, fake feet. No, nope, they were feet. They were. It was like literally the picture of someone like sitting on the couch with their feet up like this. But it was the picture of the up bottom on of the, their feet. the hand on the arm arm rest. Rest. Arm rest. Yeah. Yeah. They can't see you. Honey. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no words. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. It was just feet. It was just feet. We're like, are you? I what, what, my feet. What am I buying here? <laughs> I think it was three dollars. <laughs> we got yeah, hard I, I feel like oh, you'd man. only. It would have to be each. They're not gonna. You know that? There was. Two. There was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like three dollars is too cheap for two feet. I think mean, three dollars is too cheap for one foot. <laughs> There's gonna be something wrong Depends with it. Depends where you get it. <laughs> Person probably had like osteoporosis or something. <laughs> so you're, like, <laughs> 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 you know about the toe that's in my uh, like the whiskey? Oh, well, maybe that's Alaska. what I yeah. Maybe they ordered it from oh, Wish. Oh, it got returned. It got stolen a little bit. Oh no, it gets though. it gets eaten on the regular basis. What? <laughs> oh, and eat people, a toe? Yeah, people like it's like in a like in a, it's like I know you're supposed to lick it. You're supposed yeah you can you can pay a lot of money and then put it in your drink and lots of people will just like it's like a dare and they'll eat it and they actually have a list of people willing to donate their toes that die <gasps> and they're usually like frostbitten like they've already fallen off and so oh like people will like donate their toes. I think they develop a <gasps> cup be, where you could yeah, taste it but like have it not fall. On your driver's license toes. or whatever, because you have the old <laughs> the toe donor. donor. Toe donor. What are these we need? How do I sign up for this? They can have my toe. <laughs> I'll make sure it's always really prettily painted. Like, <laughs> let's go find out how to call and then call a lawyer and get this set up. <laughs> <laughs> how to call and then call a lawyer. Yes. <laughs> to I mean, the whole of Yukon, I donate. My I guess toes. they have those will kits at Safeway. We can probably grab one of those and put like. 
toes. We can to this bar. It's just toes. I'm going to be a constitutional <laughs> lawyer tonight. Oh yeah, you are. Well, you're the Rob's the poster boy mascot of David Kahn and Little Party <laughs> yeah. by accident. By yeah. Accident. Yeah. The sponsored ad, with my face on it, because I was wearing a David Wilcox uh, lay in pipe hat and took a picture with him, and he famously said, "I'm the only person up here that's laid pipe." Yeah. So, <laughs> At the yeah. debate, the comedian. Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like every other Twitter comment didn't say that. <laughs> it was that and saying, "Oh yeah, don't worry, he's a constitutional lawyer." That's all anyone said. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <coughs> all right. So, you you guys have mentioned East Town Get Down last year's East Town Get Down a lot. Uh, I guess so. What does it mean? to be invited back to play this year's East Town Get Down? Um, when we were initially invited back, it was a great honor. Mm-hmm. Everything yeah. Graham does is awesome, and I'd be part of it. Uh, would love to play it. As of now, I don't know if we're welcome back, so... <laughs> that makes it sound like, like we got kicked no, out. Like, we just like, don't know if we're playing it. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah. Yeah. playing. There's been a lot of uh, upturn in management and whatnot, and... We have heard little. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have no clue what's going on. Yeah. So. I just hope that they stick to the original goals of yeah. the festival. It, because mm-hmm. it really, it was all about bringing the the small people back together and bringing, us, and bringing the music and the life back down to International Ave. And I think they really succeeded last year, and I hope that they do succeed again this year. And if we get to play it, um, I really, I, I hope we do, and that it becomes part of... Um, this beautiful thing uh, that is part of the Calgary music scene because we do have a lot of festivals, but they all seem very large and um, inaccessible. Uh, mm-hmm. Like at least a lot of the bigger ones, and something that ended up being as big as it was last year to be part of that was great. So I hope yeah. I do hope that we you know are welcome back and and that it doesn't change anything. We just mm-hmm. don't know right now, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Like. It's too bad because we did have um, a lot of agreements with Graham and we talked to him a lot and we try and volunteer with him and do the, those kinds of things and and he's and a major minor so um, you know I just hope that you know they don't take a couple steps back with all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I hope the spirit of the first festival is the same because it was awesome last year. It was one of my favorite shows, or well. It was one of my favorite days. The whole day was awesome. I've seen a lot of my buds, a lot of good, awesome bands, and it was cool to see it. Like, see Mademoiselle in a juice bar, or like, <laughs> there's just like, oh, there's just so much awesome, crazy stuff that. I some sick hip hop acts last year, like mm-hmm. Lyric. Lyric. I, I don't quite know the pronunciation, but oh man, man I could listen awesome. to him all day. Yeah, yeah. Lyric's awesome. Yeah, and I wouldn't have known if it wasn't for like East Town Get Town, and that's great. Mm-hmm. But, uh,. So I hope it, yeah, I'd like to see it be that way. Um, I don't know. I'm just hoping that major minor stuff to, and that can coexist and everyone can have a good time. Because mm-hmm. mm. definitely one of the cool things about East Town Get Down is that the majority of the acts on the bill are from Calgary. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Like, it's, it's so cool because then you get to discover all these new bands that um, going into it, like you had no idea who they were mm-hmm. or what they sounded like. But you're like. all part of the same scene, yeah. essentially. Exactly. Which mm-hmm. I really liked. I find that, um, like, I, I like Femwave is really good for that, I find. Um, which, and I love Femwave, and I love the people who put it on. Um, but some of the other festivals, I feel like they focus too far about bringing people in. And that's not a bad thing, but so Calgary does have such a great um, music scene that we really should, do need a festival that focuses on our scene and our talent um, and sh- can ch- showcase it and highlight it in such a wonderful, fantastic way, right? Mm-hmm. I really like where it is, too, because no one ever, like, I never went to uh, that, like, the block, it's on International Ave, not for any particular reason. I just didn't know it was there. I was just mm-hmm. living in the Northwest. I never get down there. Don't mm-hmm. drive, whatever, yeah. But... The restaurants were all super good, and everyone worked there was so nice, and like, mm-hmm. like all of them, like I was like going through everywhere. You're, you end up just talking to people, and uh, just, I don't know, it was great. It brought attention to a lot of places you normally wouldn't go to, and now 
Like, I just sit there thinking about the restaurant some days, like, I really yeah, I need some good food. Salsa. Yeah, me too. Salsa is um, awesome. That Ethiopian place across the street, don't remember yeah. the name, but it was so good. Yeah. They were that really, place. really nice. Yeah, they were ridiculously nice. But I found the, um, last year, the vibe that East Town had was almost like, um, like having a block party and then just finding out who all your neighbors are and just seeing everybody there and not having that one shitty neighbor. So, <laughs> just like everybody getting along and stuff. It was, yeah. It's it, just fun. It would be unreal to say that we're not like, what's, what's that word where you're like, uh, not concern, somewhere between concern and questioning, just because we have so much respect for Graham and how much work he put into it. Like last year, that guy didn't stop. He was back and forth everywhere. Like mm-hmm. he, and just, he's always done good. Like he, like he does good for the scene. does good for things like watching how, uh, I can't remember the platypus. Gratuitous platypus. Yeah. How they just opened up for Calpurnia and stuff. And like, those guys are super young, so that's super awesome. Mm-hmm. I, I love seeing stuff like that, and I want more of it. So it's, well, we're not, like, against it. We're just a little, yeah, I think apprehensive. Of, apprehensive, yeah. We like it. We want it to be as good. Like, we got high hopes, but yeah, but mm-hmm. a big part of it was Graham and how awesome he is and all everyone who works with Major Minor. Yeah. yeah. You could really tell how much he really cared about it and, like, put his time and energy and love into it last mm-hmm. year. You really got that vibe out of it. So really made you want just, to help out. Yeah, so just really hoping that that continues, um, just with the community aspect and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely a huge set- shout out to Graham of Major Minor Music because he is one of the people who's making this music scene like accessible to everybody. I feel yeah. like that's the goal of Major Minor Music is mm-hmm. making music as accessible to the most amount of people possible. Yeah. And he's always postering and shit, like, promoting. <laughs> like, you go to a show, you walk outside, there's Graham. Is he at the show? No, he's telling you about the next show. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I always get the passing, like, hey, how's it going? Here, come to this show. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I guess, uh, what, uh, what kind of stuff is Harsh up to in this coming year? What do you guys got going on? We are busy, um, especially in the next little while. We um, are really fortunate to be able to be asked to create a cask at Village um, with Mademoiselle, which is also hosted by FemWave. So we get to do that, and that is the so <laughs> first Friday of May, I believe. And now I have to get up my calendar because I don't remember anything. Do you yeah, for free? It's a free event. No, I mean the... the- the beer? The beer. I don't know. I, I hope mean, so. I love that. <laughs> Priorities. Like, like, yeah. like, like, do I, do I got like we make it? Do I got like pay for one? Like, can I? Have one? I think we. Like, I think I think we get at least one. Probably get one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have to share one. one. Give us one. Oh, yeah. We don't even get so. Um, so that's yeah, on no, May third. It's like a tiny cup. <laughs> yeah. Just like a flight. Yeah. It just one. <laughs> Um, so that's on May 3rd with Mademoiselle, which is really exciting, and that's also their single release. So, yeah, we're really excited about that. Um, you should make two songs and just one-up them at their own show. No, yeah. <laughs> no we like them. Yeah. <laughs> it's a competition, man. Um, and, I mean, so May is, like, really, really packed for us. So on the May 10th, we are actually we were invited to speak on the topic of toxic masculinity with um, the group called The Community. Um, we have the event on our Facebook page. Um, if you want to look at it, it's uh, at a building in Eau Claire, and we, it's a community discussion, so it's not just us talking uh, to you, but we're actually facilitating um, what we hope to be a very positive discussion on um, uh, what toxic masculinity is and um, what that means um, and what we can do um, as a society and even just as like a local community to help, you know, identify and combat what could be considered toxic masculinity? Um, mm-hmm. you gotta Glenn's gonna be there. Yeah. He said he was. Gonna, if you know Glenn, you know. <laughs> you know hey Glenn. He's got a. He's got a very picky taste on. No, I don't think he does. He shows up to a lot of stuff. But he did. He was stoked. Yes. So people are yeah, stoked. People cool. are talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, reinforcing positive masculine roles and and just just gender roles in general and how is everyone forced into it and how it divides us and how we as a society should move past that so that's that's going to be a discussion it might be yeah hopefully it won't go as off topic as this (laughs) 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 specifically because that one is about one topic yeah there's a plan there is a plan (laughs) maybe I'll just sit at the side and not talk (laughs) (laughs) Um, and then we got invited to play Moments Fest this year that's so, super. Yeah. Yeah. This is our first time going out to Six Ica, and we're really excited so about excited. that. Timber Fay. Oh, that band's my new favorite band yeah. this year. Yeah. Favorite they Calgary band. Well, amazing. Calgary area band. They play yeah. in Calgary a lot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're good. I could watch Timber Fang over and, and over again. And they're so nice. Super nice. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next weekend. We've got so many things, oh my god. Um, <laughs> so May 18th, we're playing at the Bohemia in Edmonton for Sinners Fest um, with the Motherfuckers. Um, they're the headliner band of that night. Um, there's a lot of other good ones. Chips of Boy, I remember being on there. Um, that as far as my memory goes. Yeah, there's 10 bands or 11 bands. Yeah, or something. yeah. I don't know. so that'll be fun. And then hopefully we get to play East Town Get Down. Hopefully. Yeah. It's on our calendar. Yeah. We're on the poster. And then yeah. Yeah. So that's our that's our next that's our next month and which is really, really exciting and we're we're really hoping that we'll be able to start um, recording some stuff as well because we've got about half an album of songs written that we are really excited to work on and um, really like our plan for the summer is to play a handful of shows here and there to get enough money to really uh, start recording our next album and really Getting getting a really 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 tight really great you know item to kind of show the world because we're much better than we were last year. Although mm-hmm. we recorded the last one all of our on our own, which yeah. was really fun. Yeah, um, I don't know if I'd say it was really fun. You were drunk most of the time. Well, that's why I don't know if I'd say. It. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought yeah, it was we, great. we it went was fun. We yeah. went extremely DIY with our last recording and did the best we could, but I think we're trying to yeah, get a bit of money so we can a little bit less DIY this time. Because that does sum us up. We are trying our best. It'd just be nice to have money to try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's pretty accurate. Though. That's like some more great... Great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Can't pay for vinyl with punk points. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although, if you want me to, if we can cash those in with anybody who uh, wants to press vinyl for us. Yeah, we yeah. have lots of punk points. Are worth there. Anything. <laughs> we got punk points and we're ready to cash them in. <laughs> so, dude, tricked me. He sold me so many camel bucks. I didn't even know they were gone or what they were, but there were so many of them. It was a good deal. <laughs> Could have got a canoe. I don't know. Cool. Uh, is, there any, <laughs> is there any just final things you guys want to say before we close this? Yeah, up? when do we get the pods? <laughs> We're waiting all night. This conversation's great, but like, come on. Cast us the pods. <laughs> like the Tide Pods? I don't know, like any pods will do. Yeah, I kind of was hoping it was like sensory deprivation. Like, oh, that's what we were doing tonight. Yeah, we gonna... actually didn't tell him we were going. We just shoved him in the car and was like, come with us. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. No. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's been great fun chatting. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, lots of yeah. Lots of fun stuff coming up that we yeah. can't announce yet, but it's going to be good. Yeah. yeah. And oh, then, uh, you can check me out, apparently, at the DOA show. Because yeah. I'll be, I might be refing for that sweet band hockey fight, mm-hmm. Friends of the Band Hirsch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I might be there. So check, no guarantees. Check Cam out yeah. at that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've never had an op- like an opportunity to self promo anything before. For any reasons, I had to take it. Like, I, don't, like, I don't particularly see another chance happening. So, awesome. Well, I'll have all the links uh, to how people can find you guys on social media and stuff in the episode notes. Um, yeah, thanks very much for being on the show. Cool. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks a lot.
If you liked this episode of the podcast, why not leave a review? You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. For up-to-date information on the podcast, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can find us at Froggy Style Productions. That's Frog, the letter E, Style Productions. For more ways to support the show, visit fsproductions.ca.